Hello everyone, happy Thursday to you. I hope you're having a great day. Um, this is actually Thursday. This is not a pre-recorded video. My stepfather's surgery was um, canceled yet again. This is, I believe, the third time and pushed back until Monday. So we're all kind of a little bit upset with that. Um, so anyways, so Monday will be his surgery, Lord willing. And um, st still, you know, your prayers would be appreciated. So today's video is about Christians getting themselves and other people in trouble. And our actions can wreak havoc on our own lives and our families. And so I thought this was a great quote. It says, when a Christian is not in the will of God, he or she becomes a troublemaker. So when we're walking out of the will of God, we become a troublemaker. And so I'm going to read a, a section of just the first chapter of Jonah and then make a few comments about it. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah, some son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. So the Lord is telling Jonah to do something, okay? Something specific gives him a specific directions of what to do. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for the port and paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord, which alone is just a joke in itself because uh, you can't flee from the Lord. But what he's really doing is fleeing from the will of the Lord. And he, in that decision to disobey, which was an absolute decision to disobey, it wasn't even a, um, like a, you know, like a momentary thing, like a, like we stub our toe or a, a block falls on our hands and we curse, like a reactionary kind of momentary thing. It literally is a decision of willful disobedience to run away and plan out to run away from the Lord. And four, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. So here we have the Lord disciplining, okay? And that's what happens when we become troublemakers. The Lord loves us so much that he is going to bring us back into obedience because he knows it is for the best of us and he loves us. So he is bringing this violent storm because of course he is the creator and he can, it, everything is at his beck and call. Notice the sailors are unbelievers. They are in a panic and crying out to their own God. So Jonah is not being a good example as a Christian to them. And Jonah's troublemaking got them in trouble too and actually risking their lives, his disobedience. Then continuing on. But Jonah had gone down below deck where he lay down and he fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. So there's desperation. They're like, are you kidding me? And get up and pray to your God. They're calling out all the stops. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So God divinely was in the midst of them casting lots so that it would fall on Jonah. So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country and what people are you? So they are outraged and want an answer from Jonah, okay? Well, what an awful thing for us if something similar happens and they go, well, aren't you a Christian? So we need to remember that our testimony and glorifying God is at stake. He answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. And obviously he, you know, he's saying God made everything and he, and he made the heavens and all the people and so forth. 
This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. So back in their times, <clears throat> they all had, quote, deities that were over something, a harvest, the moon, the sun, the stars, you know, uh, fertility and so forth. So when they heard that his God was over the sea and the land, they were immediately terrified because this is happening on the sea, okay? So then it says the sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make, uh, do to you to make the sea calm down for us? And he said, pick up and pick me up and throw me into the sea and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. So he's telling them it's because of his actions. So he's taken accountability of it. Um, even though his attitude continues to be terrible throughout the whole book of Jonah, but we're only reading the first chapter. So instead, the men did their best to row back to land. But they could not, for the sea grew even wild, wilder and wilder than before. Then they cried to the Lord, O oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man for you, O oh Lord, have done as you pleased. And so basically... They're terrified of his God because they don't want to kill an innocent man, um, even though we're all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. We're not really innocent, um, but innocent in the sense that, you know, he hasn't committed a terrible crime that people would typically be punished for, but he is disobeying the Lord. So they recognize, uh, first they're, you know, fearful about throwing him over, but, you know, they're prayed about it to his God, okay? And they're going to do it. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard and the raging sea grew calm. And at this, at this, the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. And that's the end of what I'm going to read. So they finally did it threw him over and God made it known to them that he is the one and only true God. And so they made vows to him. They made a sacrifice to him. I'm sure the fear of the Lord came upon them because Jonah's God, the one true God, who's the God of all, you know, the earth, sky, sea, animals, people, he answered that and the sea grew instantly calm. And I'm thinking about Jesus when he said, Peace be still, and the sea and the lake grew calm. So he is the God of it. So basically, Jonah brought this disaster upon them. Other people who were, quote, innocent of anything, really, of having to do with this situation. And so we can do the same. Another example is when Lot chose to move to Sodom and Gomorrah. If you remember that, he ended up bringing a bunch of havoc on his family for making that choice. He lived in a sinful city. He ended up having to finally flee and the angels had to take hold of their hands and rush them out. And his wife looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. And if you recall, he ended up getting drunk in a tent and his daughters went in and slept with him. And, and there became an incestuous relationship that went into a whole tribe of people that had a bunch of disaster after that. And another story that comes to mind is David. When instead of going off to war like he should have, he was became lazy and he was up on his roof and saw Bathsheba bathing and called a married woman to come to him and they had to obey. When the king calls you, you have to obey. She didn't really have a choice in the matter. And then slept with her, got pregnant, the baby died. And, and through his sin, there was just constant havoc in his whole entire family. If you read about it, constant havoc, rebellious of his sons, murder attempts, coup attempts, I mean, rapage going on. It was a disaster. So these stories are a good example of why we should remain in the will of God and not be troublemakers. The will of God is actually the safest and best 
place for us because God loves us and his heart is for us. So whatever his heart is for us is good for us. Even though we may be fearful, we can trust in the Lord. I hope everyone has a great day and I will see you Monday. I will do a pre-recorded video and release it on Monday morning. God bless.